In this section, we're going to start kind of tying together what we did last chapter again with our um, Lewis dot structures and how we actually draw these molecules correctly um, so that they fit together um, and use the number of valence electrons they have available to be able to make bonds. And so this will show you um, where the bonds are located. So again, we go back to those Lewis dot structures. We're going to write in exactly how many valence electrons they are. But remember, these are going to be two-dimensional. Um, so it basically shows you how they bond together, but not exactly where they're at because it is a two-dimensional. So let's start with um, ionic compounds. Again, we need to remember how many valence electrons there are. So there's one for group one, two for group two, there's three for group 13, four, and et cetera across the periodic table. Again, um, that should be a review from last chapter. Um, when we put our electrons around, we talked about this um, last chapter. Uh, really what we're showing is our S and our three P's. So if we have oxygen here and we know that there's six electrons, a lot of times um, we will say that we need to put one electron on each side before we double them up. So we would put one and then we would go back and double up like that. You could also put two on each side. Okay. It just it depends on your preference. Um, this is perfectly acceptable also. Okay. As long as you're showing six valence electrons, you're good to go. Um, but we do consider this four different orbitals, one here, one here, one here, and one here. Um, so again, you could write it this way and this would be acceptable also. Okay, so any of those are fine with me. So what do we do when we um, have an ionic bond? There's a transfer of electrons, and that's really, really important to remember, is that we have an electron, in this case here, with potassium. It wants to get rid of that one valence electron, so it's going to transfer that electron over here to chlorine. Chlorine's going to gain that electron. So what we have to remember is when we do have that transfer, we're going to have these atoms become ions. So Chlorine is going to gain that electron. It becomes negative. Potassium, like I wrote here, um, loses the electron, so it's positive. So now this positive and negative charge attract together and cancel out. So what we have to remember is this charge and this charge should always equal zero. So in this case, it does. So we have 1K and we have 1Cl, and this becomes our compound, KCl. Another example here is barium and fluorine. So here, barium has two electrons to lose. Fluorine can accept the one, but then its valence shell is full. So barium still needs to get rid of an electron. So what has to happen here is there has to be another fluorine available with its seven valence electrons. Then now this fluorine can accept the second electron from barium. So now barium has a positive two charge because it lost two electrons and each fluorine has a negative one charge. So now if we add our charges up together, plus two minus one minus one is equal to zero. So now when we write our formula, we have one Ba, but we have two fluorines. So we write our fluorine and then we put a small number of subscript two right there at the bottom, sorry, um, and that then maybe if I can get this to write. That number two then allows us to um, show that there's two fluorines. We need both of those charges to cancel out that positive. Okay, So that's how we would write our ionic. So whenever you show an ionic bond, I expect to see the transfer of electrons. I expect to see the charges written out so that you can see those are equal to zero. And then you write the formula correctly with the, with the number of metal atoms you have and the metal and non-metal atoms that you have. Remember, um, again here, sorry, just kind of skipped ahead, that the atoms are not sharing here. So we need to draw that the atoms are clearly separate. Okay, so these are all separate atoms with charges. This is our chemical formula, which is different, but I want you guys to get used to writing those together for next chapter. So those are your ionic bonds and how to show the transfer of electrons.